This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Running full system Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how my three pound combat robot division performed at the March Norwalk Havoc event. Now this event recap might be slightly different from some of the other ones that I've done. First reason for that is that the March event was run completely differently from every other Norwalk Havoc event that I've attended because they changed up basically everything. The whole event was really, really fast paced. They were pushing people to get ready for fights right away. And I didn't have a ton of time to film stuff in between fights other than after my very first fight of the day. Uh, second reason is my older brother had been helping me with some of the camera work in previous events that I've attended. But this time he actually started coaching a high school team and they were competing themselves at the same time. So I had nobody to help me filming things in the pits or during my fights. So unfortunately, this is the first event in years where I haven't had my own camera angle of the fights. And it turns out, for reasons that will become clear shortly, this was pretty much the absolute worst event to not have my own camera at, which is really unfortunate. So I'm sorry the quality of the video will not be as good as it could have been otherwise. I don't have any slow motion footage, and uh, one of the fights has a much lower quality video feed than I'm used to. So. That is a shame and something that they are planning to address at Norwalk in the future. But because they changed everything up for this year and this was the first event that they ran this year, there were a ton of things that just weren't really totally worked out properly. And I'm sure that the April event, which is next weekend, will be much better. Also, I now have an entire new version of Division with a few small changes that is ready for April. I'll talk about some of those changes at the end of this video and I'll probably do a full overview video as part of my April event recap, which should be up in a few weeks. Uh, I can't make another video this coming weekend because I'll be competing and there's just not enough time. All right, for anyone who's not familiar with Division already, this is a three pound combat robot fighting in the beetle weight weight class, which is for three pound robots. The weapon, I have a few different options, but this is the classic logo blade, which is quarter inch thick AR-500 with a seven and a half inch effective diameter. All of the weapons are made from the same material and thickness and have the same effective diameter, but some of them are different shapes than this. Um, this spins it up to about 11,000 RPM with a really powerful motor, and it can use that to self-right if it gets stuck in a weird position. And I have this experimental new drivetrain on this version of the bot that I've never tested before in combat. So I was really interested to see how that would do, as well as this whole single unibody aluminum chassis, which was also a brand new and huge change to the bot, which I made for a variety of reasons. If you want to learn more about the design of this bot, I have a whole overview video that I will link in a card above and a link in the description below. So make sure to check that out because I don't have 30 minutes to go over it right now. All right, now that out of the way, let's see. My very first fight was going to be up against Professor Hex. Now this was actually kind of a pseudo rematch from before. I say a pseudo rematch because Professor Hex is run by Team Leatherbacks Robotics, which is from the University of uh, Maryland, I believe. And they have a different driver. So they changed a couple things. When I was talking to them before the fight, they said the main upgrades that they made were to add a plastic backplate to the bot because I ripped straight through their 3D printed body and cut through the power wires in the bot last time that I fought them. And then they also bought some really sticky, grippy material that they added to the wheels so that they would get better traction this time around. So this would be a real test to see if this version of Division, version 3.0, is actually better than version 2 point whatever that I fought them with last time. Because, you know, if I get completely wrecked, then I think I might have to go back to the drawing board. Let's see what happened. All right, I see that we're loading into cage two. Seth Schaefer and Division, a new and improved Division versus Professor Hex. 
This is undefeated uh, bracket round two. The first time we're seeing both of these robots here today. Eight, seven. And we're off. Good hit immediately from Division on Professor Hex. Oh, uh, looks like that no. wheel is a little askew. It is askew. Oh, and, and that wheel is gone. gone. It is gone. Wow, incredible reliability from Division. And that may be it. Oh, with a little wobble. Professor Hex could be dead. Professor Hex thinking about knocking out. Oh, instead it's a knockout. Whoa, good knock win out. for Seth. Yeah. Okay. Seth Schaefer, Division, incredible bot. Um, also, Seth uh, is, a, is a great content creator on YouTube. You should check out his channel, Just Cause Robotics. Gives you uh, all the fundamental knowledge that you need to get involved in the sport. Seth, also a good human being. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I got to pit for Seth at Motorama a couple of years ago, and Seth helped you out with your combat robot, Chris. Yeah, he sure did. He uh, rolled up his uh, sleeves and his shorts, and you know he dove right in and helped us get Dark Side ready for the uh, what was it, the November event back last year. My name's Brandon Russell, and this is my robot, Professor Hex. All right, you want to talk me through what was your strategy going into the fight and what happened? Uh, strategy going into the fight was to try and spin up the weapon and then go for either side of the wheels. Now, this is my first Norwalk, so I'm a relatively inexperienced driver. Um, the previous issues this robot was having, traction problems, and uh, it got hit in the back before, so that's why this plate's on there, and then we've got this rubbery grip stuff. Uh, it was able to get better traction than the last time it fought Division. Yep. Uh, however, in one hit, Division managed to stretch this plastic around the bolt, taking it off, and then my wheel was exposed. And then the wheel took a hit here. Now, you'll notice these shafts have grooves so that the, uh, the nut can bite into the shaft and, in theory, not come off. Mm -hmm. However, that doesn't help if the entire <laughs> assembly gets broken. You also notice uh, this was printed at an angle, and it sheared along the print lines, ah. despite them being angled. So that was a lot of force into my wheel, oh, yeah. and then and the, the shaft robot is uh, not exactly it definitely cracked some off the motor. Oh man. And then there's uh, a little bit of damage. That's a carbon the, fiber nylon chassis. Yeah, carbon fiber nylon chassis split here and here. I think just from the force oh, yeah. of the motor torquing into the frame. I don't know if, uh, did we even do weapon on weapon? I don't think so. Division basically looks fine. There's a little nick here on the titanium wedge, which means yeah, it did its, it's not job. not do anything to the titanium, though. I don't think you got to my wheels in the back, though, which is nice. I was, uh, I was up against the ropes for a good amount of time there, like yeah, flipped upside really, down. Really fun fight. I know it wasn't exactly a rematch because you're a different driver than I yeah, fought I'm last time. Driver. But same, almost the same robot, and it had a different failure mode this time, which means you potentially picked the thing that went wrong last time. Yeah, it did not get killed in the back this time. Yes. Right. Long side. Thank you very much. Great to meet you. Thank you. So that went pretty well. I just had to recharge the battery. Really happy with how Division V3 performed in that first fight and to see all of the different changes that I made working. Uh, my next opponent was going to be the winner of a fight between Fully Defined and Tiger Claw. If you watched my April Fool's video, you will see that Fully Defined absolutely obliterated Tiger Claw, scaring the crap out of me for this next one. Fully Defined is one of the most uniquely shaped robots at the entire tournament, and they are definitely not the kind of robot Division was built to face. I've actually only fought a very small number of traditional vertical spinner bots in the past, and Fully Defined is not that either. It is extremely wide, and it's almost more of a control bot than it is a spinner. The weapon would only really be able to reach my bot if I was basically facing it backwards, and that would mean that he could easily hit the weakest part of my entire robot, which is the back of the aluminum chassis. So I was going to have to try my best to avoid that from happening, but I wasn't really sure what there was to hit on him except for the wheels, because the entire body is just TPU with tons of air gap in the middle of it, so that all of his electronics were far from danger. Let's see how that fight went. So remember how I said it would be nice to have had my own camera filming the fights? Yeah, so this is one of those instances. Um, 
before our fight was officially supposed to start, and therefore before it was shown on stream, because they had changed the whole setup for Norwalk, they actually removed the clocks that showed to the competitors inside of each arena. So we kept hearing really loud amplified counts from different referees on different boxes, three, two, one, fight. And on one of those counts, my opponent started driving towards me. I didn't know if this was supposed to be for our fight or not, um, but after a few seconds he turned on his weapon and I felt I had to engage, so I drove at him as well. He managed to get a nice hit on the back of Division, exactly where I was hoping to avoid getting hit, and after 20 or 30 seconds of this, then all of a sudden the referee decided he would actually notify us that it in fact wasn't supposed to be our fight that was happening, it was somebody else's. So he had us stop and reset and go back to our corners. Now I had been talking with the driver of Fully Defined before this fight, both of us had lots of pre-fight jitters, I know that this was an honest mistake from him, and this happened to multiple other competitors beforehand. It just happens that in this case, I only have one of my chassis, and there was no way I could fix the damage before the fight. So I basically just had to go into this one, essentially with the match starting over having already gotten some pretty significant damage. So yeah, not ideal. This is what actually got shown on stream. Five. Undefeated oh bracket round three, three fully defined versus two, division. Wow, one, two great bots fight. here. I'm Robots excited for this. Fight. Division definitely with the reach advantage, but fully defined definitely with the corral advantage. How's this is gonna play out? Fully defined successfully tipping division. End over end. This is a good hint from Fully Defined on Division. Wow. How oh, Division finds itself up against the rail, but it was able to save itself. Division is a Deep Six inspired, massive vertical center versus the control bot of Fully Defined. But at this weight, uh, this weight class is able to kind of uh, come back to life instead of just being a one hit wonder. Oof. Incredibly destructive here. Fully defined is finding the angles on division. Look how small division looks uh, compared to fully defined in those wide, wide forks. A rallying division. Division oh. on its head. Very helpfully right in front of Brett. Fully defined has been inverted. It's so easily able to right itself with those long forks. 90 seconds to go in this match. Fully defined, able to get around to the side of division where it is absolutely safe. There's another good pin from fully defined on division. Pushing Seth Schaefer and his robot up against the, the rail here. Coming up on one minute and left And look at that. Are the, the, are the forks on Division stuck under the rail? They might be. Oh, no! Division hit Brett. And I think that weapon is dead. You can hear Division's little song inside of the, uh, oh, the no. box. Tap out. Okay. Usually when you hear that little song, it means that essentially the robot is rebooting. And uh, looks like the drive on Division was dead. Two builders coming over to, uh, to chat with one another. I feel like the, dr the driver of Fully Defined was just as surprised as we are. So yeah, that fight obviously did not go how I had hoped it would. Um, I actually ran into Really, there were like three things that went wrong in this fight. So number one, obviously the back of my bot was split open by one hit, and that is very bad because it's kind of thin aluminum back there. It's 80 thousandths of an inch thick. I knew that that was by far the biggest weak spot on the bot, um, but this was one of those things where I just didn't have time to fix it. I got the aluminum chassis for the robot on Thursday night before the competition due to various problems with the guy who was making it for me ran into last minute, so there was nothing I could really do about that. Um, 
I didn't have really any time to test the bot at all. The video clip that I showed at the very start of this was pretty much all of the time I spent running this current set of electronics before the competition. So what happened here was first off, when Fully Defined got me up against the wall for one of these hits, he got like the absolute best possible angle to attack my drive system. You see here at that point in the fight, it looks like Division is no longer driving properly. That's because when I was angled up against the wall, his spinner directly hit the pinion gear driving one of my wheels. Now, hitting the pinion gear and the motor shaft actually was not the issue, and in fact even nicked part of the motor bell as well. What happened was he hit the pinion, and the steel tooth of the pinion somehow launched itself inside of the motor and locked it up from spinning by getting jammed in between the magnet ring of the motor and the stator in the motor. So from this point on, I now was trying to drive around with a stalling locked motor, which was draining my battery faster than usual. Um, so you'll see, aside from the back of my bot being split open, the custom PCB running everything was still functioning. It had taken a glancing blow but was still working fine. But with a stalled drive motor and an already pretty limited battery life on top of having run the bot for 20 or 30 seconds extra before the fight officially started, I ended up just running out of battery power at the end here. So that was ultimately what actually killed the bot. I did not actually sustain any damage preventing the other drive motor or the weapon from working. I just couldn't keep them running anymore because the battery got way too flat. In fact, after this fight, I needed to toss the battery in the sand bucket because it had started to puff up and gotten way too hot to use. So I'm definitely moving to a larger battery for version 3.1 in April. Look at that! You know what's right under that? Wait, oh my god, how did I hit that? Oh, uh, I threw you on top of me, I think. We're lining it up. <laughs> Dude, you were like... You hit my drive motor. Literally the can of one of the drive motors. Is it front? Is it ruined? I don't think so. Oh. Oh, you nicked it like the little. Do you have any you ruined the drive pinion and chipped one of the teeth? Do you have any ruined parts? Came, or the, the set screw on that pinion came loose, so I wouldn't have had that drive side even if the motor hadn't been damaged. All right, so he nicked this pinion gear and also hit the motor can itself in a couple places. You can see there's a nick right here and more here. Um, it looks like that messed up the motor a little bit, but like I think that was a fluke because his bot is like underneath me and all over on me, so that sucks. Obviously this is the bigger, more concerning thing. I'm gonna have to try and hammer this back because it's the only one I have. The PCB, when I took the bot out of the arena, I couldn't turn the switch off, but now it seems to be working fine again. Um, and it's so much work to change this out, I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. So it looks like the aluminum billet chassis may have not been the best idea, but for completely different reasons Wait, than I expected. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was the only one I have. <laughs> the PCB, you hit the PCB directly, it kept powering everything, but I can't turn off the switch now. So. If, you don't, you, if you don't use it, I'll take it. I will give you one as a trophy, because I brought them specifically to hand to everyone I fight today. So here you go. You get the... You can do, you did something terribly wrong to my robot. Congratulations. Oh my God, that's awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Time to thank this video's sponsor, PCBWay. Not only did PCBWay manufacture these custom PCBs that I designed that are running all of the electronics inside of my bot, but on top of that, they also provided me with this. This is going to be the billet chassis that I use in April for Division version 3.1. They made two of these for me with a quick turnaround, fantastic machining quality, tolerances on this part are within like three thousandths on every single dimension, even ones that I spec'd plus or minus twenty thousandths of an inch, and I'm really impressed with the quality of this aluminum part. This is machined out of a solid, roughly four pound block of aluminum, and the final part is only six and a half ounces of aluminum left. But they were able to get all these tight, hard to reach spots, and a really, really nice service finish overall. Really happy with the quality. Check out PCBWay at PCBWay.com and follow the link in the description so that you can get a discount and I get a little bit of a kickback when you order.
So, after finally getting the bot back together, I was being hurried by the uh, staff to get the bot into the arena as fast as possible for my last fight. I was having some issues with the PCB, which I have now realized was an issue with the way that I decided to design it, not with the manufacturing at all. It was just that I have it switching the negative side instead of the positive side of the battery. And that meant that if there was any part of a speed controller that had an exposed piece of copper that happened to be grounded, touching anywhere on the aluminum chassis, most likely it was going to complete the circuit to the battery. And then I would end up having the robot be like, on, but not actually capable of delivering full current to anything until it was actually switched on. I basically just covered up all the lights to make it look like the bot might still be off, loaded it into the arena that way, and uh, pretended to turn the robot on when it had already been on the whole time when I loaded it in for my last fight. Uh, this third and final fight was against a wedge bot called Wreckfest that had a Fingertech Antweight drum spinner as a weapon, and I was expecting to win this fight. But in my haste to put the bot back together, I forgot one crucial thing. So, I lost that fight because I forgot to put a piece of tape on my battery connector, and my battery unplugged itself. Let me know in the comments what changes you think that I could make to make Division even better in the future. However, I can't take any of your suggestions for this week because I have the April 23rd Norwalk Havoc event coming up just this coming weekend. I've already made a bunch of changes to the bot to try and make it better than ever. First off, a soft squishy TPU ass. Secondly, Larger 525 milliamp hour battery, much bigger than the 430 milliamp I was using before. And I've made some slight tweaks and changes to the wheels and the way that they integrate with the drivetrain so that it should run a bit smoother and more consistently, as well as printed out some guards I haven't put on yet that should prevent any shrapnel from getting inside of the drive motors this time. I think with those changes, Division can be a really competitive bot but we'll just have to see in April. It's going to be a stacked event. That's all I have for you today. Hope you liked this video. If you liked it, make sure to click the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified. And as always, thanks for watching.